What's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase. Today I'm going to give you 10 quick tips to use the key editor in Cubase. So I've just written this in in MIDI and you can click into it and you get the key editor. And some people find the key editor intimidating, but once you learn a few quick tips, everything becomes much, much easier. So let's just jump right in. First is the settings that I like to use here on my top bar. So this is your snap setting and that's hotkey J. With snap off, you can place things wherever you want on the grid. As you can see, they're not lined up to the lines. So we'll take those out with snap on, it will line up to your quantized lines. It'll snap to your grid. That is important. And the way I am putting in, this is number two, the way I'm putting in notes is using the modifier key alt. It turns your selection key into a pencil and allows you to draw. Now, if you didn't want to do that and you wanted to change it to a pencil, the hotkey would be eight. But I find that a bit laborious because then you have to hit one to go back to your selection key. So number two tip is definitely alt. So number one tip is have snap on because if you're editing MIDI with a mouse and a keyboard, it is nice to snap it to the grid. Uh, the next thing would be I would advise you use grid as your uh, manner of editing as opposed to any of these others. Grid relative would work as well, but just for the sake of argument, grid is good. So number three tip, let's discuss quantize and length. These are key hotkeys for when you're editing MIDI. Control minus selects the previous quantize and control equals or plus I think it's control equals selects the next quantize. This is great for when you want to change the quantize on the fly and you will want to do that if you're editing MIDI with a mouse so just keep those in mind and as a caveat I will say that I know that these hotkeys were set up when I first started using Cubase but I'm not certain whether or not when I switched to Cubase Pro 9 they were still there so if you need to map those or if you want to map those to something you know uh, for all the key commands you can search quantize or whatever and you'll get you know your list of key commands and I have these set up as control plus equals and control and uh, minus or underscore whatever and that works for me but if you have a different idea of what you'd like to do or you want to set the individual quantizes because uh, that's how it works with length you can't actually choose a next so if we go back to hotkeys and we look for length key commands length set insert length it's alt and the number so as you can see one is one one two is half note four uh, three is quarter note four is eighth note so the length is important so right now it's set to eighth notes so if I draw in a note it'll be an eighth note but if I switch this to sixteenth or I can use the hotkey alt four five alt five It'll switch to 16th, and you'll see when I draw on a note, it'll be a 16th note. So now that we know this, that's the first three things. Use Alt key as your modifier to draw in notes. Have Snap on and Grid relative. And number three is Quantize is Control equals and Control minus. And Length is Alt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up, depending on how long you want your notes to be. So now that we know this, let's just go ahead and do a little bit of entering of notes. So I'll set the quantize to eighth notes. And let's just write in a bass line. C, we'll just walk it up the scale. And we'll actually make these quarters. So we'll switch the length to quarters by hitting Alt 3. Um, and then we'll go back to eighths. Uh, we'll call this a C. We'll make these quarters. G. C. Oh, and I didn't actually play what I had here. It was just something I wrote in in MIDI. So,
And that should probably be a C at the end there. Cool. And this should probably be a G back here. And that is my tip number four. If you want to move a note up and down the scale, you just need to use your up and down arrow keys. That will come in handy. Trust me. So, we've learned four things so far, and they are use snap on grid, how to change your quantize in your length, and how to insert notes. Those are the first three, and the fourth is how to change a note's pitch with up and down. The next thing is, you know, there'll be often times where you want to move a note along the quantize path, and that's easy too. That is control and arrow. So this is tip number six to move it along a quantize path, and that works for whatever you select. So if I wanted this whole thing, it's set up to eighth notes. So if I wanted it to start one bar later, I would select everything, hit control, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth. That's how eighth notes work. And the whole thing starts one bar later. Let's take a listen. Hey, not too shabby. So we have this piece and we can just move it back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you wanted to transpose the whole thing, it's in C because it's easiest to write in C because as long as you don't hit any of the black notes, you're okay. A little tip for y'all. But if we wanted to transpose it, let's say to B flat, we have everything selected and we just boom, boom. And the whole song is in B flat or A sharp, depending on your viewpoint. So same song. So that's an easy way to transpose, just select everything and move it up or down. And it shouldn't really screw anything up because if you write it in a certain key, it'll work in any key. Now, that is tip number six. So let's get it back to C, I suppose, just our original thing. And let's say you wanted to select multiple things at a time using your keyboard. And this, I, I use this all the time. So you have this G selected on this chord here. Well, if you hold shift and use the right and left arrows, you can select the whole chord. So if you want this to hit an eighth note later, you know, you can select the whole chord and move it. So, and you can select this and move it. But if you wanted to not select everything, we could do it that way. So that is tip number seven. You use the shift key to select multiple notes at a time. That's pretty handy. Now let's take a look at tip number eight, and this is where we get into some of the sweet stuff. There's controller lanes down here, and they control things like, well, let's take a look at what they control. Velocity, pitch bend, aftertouch, and then you get into your big MIDI stuff like modulation and expression. Expression is basically like volume within volume. Velocity is more or less just the volume of the note. And sustain, sustain is on 64. So you can choose whatever lane you wish. And as you see, I've done some stuff here where lane 64 comes in right here and that's kind of screwed up so let's move it back uh, and so the sustain is on but if we take the sustain off you will hear So if we go back to where the sustain was on, I think this is supposed to be there. You'll hear the sustain ringing out and you can, you know, automate when the sustain goes on and off as if you had a sustain pedal and you were playing the piano. So that is very helpful. Another thing, and this is where Cubase becomes a great teaching tool is this tab right here on the left, and this is tip number nine, chord editing. So if you're wondering what chord is this, you just highlight it and it'll tell you it's F over A. And uh, let's say you add the D in there, oops. What is that? That's D minor seven, actually. And then in its original incarnation with the B, it's actually F over B. So you can see, you know, what the chords are. And if you don't like a specific chord, like I don't like this chord, let's say, 
this is C over G, well, we can go to inversions here and cycle through, and, you know, it'll move lowest note to the top. And you'll get different inversions. But we can go back down. That sounds silly, but... So not bad, uh, that is tip number nine. You can do inversions and you can see what type of chord you're dealing with in this chord editing tab. Finally, let's go to something that is pretty amazing and powerful in Cubase. It's here in the, where is it? <laughs> it's in the, oh yeah, it's in the MIDI tab. That's what I, that's what I was going to say. It's here in the MIDI tab and uh, there are these logical presets. So if you select everything, there are a bunch of them and a lot of them are awesome. Like delete short notes. You could fix all velocities at 100. So if we go back to our controller lane and select velocity, we can see our velocity. And this is all editable. So let's say it's all over the place. Someone had a choppy performance in real life. You want to select all these and compress it. It'll compress. It's not like a compressor because there's no coloring of the tone. It just sort of evens out all the volume. So this is compressed and this is total velocity. This will perform a fade if you drag from the corner. So that's helpful to know too. That's a bonus tip. And going back to what I was talking about before, MIDI logical presets, you can fix all velocity at 100. You can, you, you really got to dig into these because they are very cool. Add octaves to chords with less than four voices. Listen to that. Now let's listen to... That's pretty awesome. So that is my tip number 10. Dig into the logical presets. See if some of them work for you. Uh, because... They are pretty impressive. So those are my 10 quick tips for editing MIDI in Cubase. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, feel free to like or subscribe. And if you'd like to see me do something in the future, feel free to leave a comment. Take care, everyone. I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.